Chapter 12, The Corrupt Sons of God and the City of Refuge. In the Old and New Testaments, the holy people of heaven are called by various names. The angels in heaven, a great company of the heavenly hosts, or the sons of God. Like in human society, in heaven there is a king as well as officials, soldiers, and people. The heavenly host or angel is the name given to the workers of God, and the title sons of God is applied to the holy people of heaven. Even so, the heavenly host or angels are not different from the sons of God but the same, because all of them are created with God's breath of life. So, we will be like the angels at the resurrection, as it is written. Luke chapter 20, verse 36. And they can no longer die, for they are like the angels. They are God's children, since they are children of the resurrection. Such precious spirits sinned against God, being tempted by Satan. As unconvicted prisoners, they are now seeking God's favor in the city of refuge. Among the 12 tribes of Israel, there were six cities of refuge under Moses' law. If anyone accidentally killed a person, he could flee to one of the cities and be protected from the hands of the blood avenger. If a man struck someone while fighting so that he died, he was to be put to death. Even though he fled to the city of refuge, if proven guilty after thorough investigation, he was to be handed over to the avenger of blood for execution by the elders of the city. But if a man killed another unintentionally and fled to the city of refuge before the avenger of blood caught him, he could save his own life. He was to stay there until the death of the high priest who was anointed with the holy oil. Afterwards, he was free to return to his home. Spiritually, this represents the heavenly country. The law of the city of refuge in the law of Moses was established to serve as a shadow of what occurred in heaven. We are God's sons who sin unintentionally in the heavenly country, being tempted by Satan, and fled to the sinful world, the city of refuge. Like the case of the city of refuge in the law of Moses, we are released from the city of refuge and return to the heavenly country by the death of Jesus Christ, the high priest who was anointed with the holy oil. However, it proves that among the spirits born as humans in this world, those who cannot be saved are the corrupted souls who had already been predestined to be Satan's servants in the previous world. They will be united with Satan and fulfill their role as Satan's servants, which is to afflict God's people, for it is written, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising then if his servants masquerade as servants of righteousness. The above verses show that among the fallen angels and God's sons, some had already been under Satan's hand and were born to act like Christians. Besides, there are an incalculable number of angels whose sins are completely revealed and can never be born as humans. As the servants of Satan, they will hinder the gospel until the days of judgment. The prophet Ezekiel described how the king of Tyre had been in heaven before he was born into this world. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 12. Son of man, take up a lament concerning the king of Tyre and say to him, this is what the sovereign Lord says. You were the model of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone adorned you, ruby, topaz, and emerald. Your settings and mountings were made of gold. On the day you were created, they were prepared. You were anointed as a guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. You were on the holy mount of God. You walked among the fiery stones. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till wickedness was found in you. Through your widespread trade, you were filled with violence and you sinned. So I drove you in disgrace from the mount of God and I expelled you, O guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones. The above passages show that the important people in this world today held a high position in heaven, like the king of Tyre. Almost all the people born into this world were the angels who had been in such glory. Some pervert the Bible and say, man was made a little lower than the angels. Actually, these words, you made him a little lower than the angels, refer to Jesus, who came into this world as well as to ordinary people like us. Then, how could the one who was made a little lower than the angels exist as God? 
The period of his being made lower than the angels only refers to the time when his divinity was veiled in flesh. Jesus did not say anything without using a parable. He revealed the secrets of the kingdom of heaven in parables and did not tell any untrue parables. He spoke the profound truth of the angelic world by using the following parable. Luke chapter 15, verse 4. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who do not need to repent. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. The above parable refers to the previous world, this world, and the world after death. Every parable spoken by Jesus is important, for it contains God's mysterious secrets of the past and the future, as it is written. Matthew chapter 13, verse 10. Jesus spoke all these things to the crowd in parables. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. So was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden since the creation of the world. All the parables spoken by Jesus reveal the secrets hidden since the creation of the world.